Oh, uh -huh. this is my game Partisan, an immersive sim FPS similar to Deus Ex and Half-Life, but with faster paced combat and retro graphics. For the past six months, I've been steady at work on new and exciting features, but for the keen eye of you, you may have noticed that the last video I posted was five months ago, not six months ago. So how could I have done six months of work? Well, that's a stupid question, stupid. I lied in my last video. Months before making that video, I've been remaking huge parts of Partisan. From the enemies to the movement to the weapons, a lot has changed. The first thing that I wanted to do was add a new NPC, the raccoon. I sculpted, retopologized, rigged, and textured a raccoon model. Then I watched a Thrill's video on shell texturing and learned how to use geometry shaders to make this cool fur shader. Everything was going smoothly. I got all this done in around half a week. Then I started working on the raccoon's AI. I initially just wanted a simple behavior of if the raccoon sees a player or an enemy, it runs away and hides. I made a new AI state, set up the raccoon's behavior tree, and it was working. And then it wasn't. The raccoon would freeze in place. The raccoon wouldn't be able to find a spot to hide in. The raccoon wouldn't be able to see. I'd fix one bug and a hundred other bugs would show up. And fixing those bugs was nearly impossible with the way that I set up my behavior tree since they use triggers. And triggers can sit anywhere in my code base. So I'd have to test a hundred different things to make sure that the one place I put a trigger wasn't the reason that the raccoon started flying. Every single step of the way, I found that making a new character was such a chore. My code was constantly working against me. So I decided I needed a change. I got to reading around, and turns out my half-assed attempt at what I thought a state machine was, was in fact not a state machine. And it turns out you can't just think super hard and make your own version of an industry standard code structure. I mean, unless you're the guy who made the first state machine, but uh, uh, I don't think that's me. After realizing that I'm a big dumb idiot, I started using a state machine library. But I found that case after case, there were a ton of changes that I wanted to make to the library. So after a lot of thought, I found that I had two options. Either I spent a couple days making changes to the library, or I spent two weeks making my own state machine library. Which one do you think I chose? All transitions, states, state parameters are stored inside of scriptable objects, meaning I could drag these scriptable objects and completely swap out behaviors. Make this guy a scared guy. Make this guy only know how to bum rush you. I can also have sub-state machines, state machines that run inside of state machines. So inside of your AI state machine, you can have an awareness state machine that handles seeking, searching, and following enemies. Then inside that state machine, you could have a combat state machine that handles finding cover, charging at enemies, and all other combat behaviors. And best of all, it's easily readable. I don't have to look through hundreds of lines of code to fix bugs since all transitions for any given state machine are all in one file. So after a month of work, I finished my own state machine library and refactored all the AI code to work with it. I can now easily add new AI states and make the AI a whole lot smarter. All the awareness code was also completely rewritten for like the third time, but it's a lot more consistent now. Also, the AI have a couple new states and things they can do. After getting into the combat state, the enemies now first look for cover. If they can't find cover, they'll find somewhere to hide, after which they'll try and ambush you. Also now, if their targets are below some health threshold, they'll just bum rush you. All these changes make the combat loop a lot more engaging, sort of like a cat and mouse chase, where at first you'll be hunting down enemies, then you'll slip up and lose some health, then they'll start charging at you until you heal up and then the chase starts all over again. There were also a couple of other changes to the AI. Pathfinding was completely remade using Aaron Grimberg's Pathfinding project because uh, Unity's pathfinding sucks wiener. Um, AI can now open doors consistently, can climb ladders, and use levers to open gates. Uh, what else? The gore system was completely remade. You can now blow off limbs in the center, and it'll take into account the outside of the limb. So if you blow off a thigh, the calf will actually stay intact, uh, which is very cool. Um, what else? Oh, uh, all the movement code was remade. After finishing the AI rework to use state machines, I realized that writing good, clean code is actually good practice. What? So I decided to delete all my movement code and rewrite it in a state machine. You know, you know why I love game dev? <laughs> you know why it's been six months? I love rewriting code. I love it. I love rewriting code. I love it. I love Same thing as last time. All transitions are now stored in a scriptable object, making it super easy to debug and read. I also spent way too much time fixing a crap ton of Delta time issues. Thanks to Jonas Ty Roller, I realized I was applying velocity incorrectly in around a hundred different places throughout my project. So I quickly put together this overcomplicated movement tester, which would tell me the difference in my movement scripts when the game was running at high FPS and low FPS. I went through every single movement script and a bunch of other scripts like arm sway and arm bob to make sure that the game ran the same when it was running at high FPS and low FPS. This took a long time, but the game feels a lot more stable now. Before, if there was a big lag spike and you were grappling, you'd be swung into a stratosphere, but that doesn't happen anymore, which I think is good. Next, I, uh, I finished up the raccoon. He doesn't have any animations yet, but he's got his own behavior now. 
uh, just hiding whenever he sees something. I also added the gore system to the raccoon. Sorry, Peter. Um, what else? <laughs> yeah. One, one more, one more time. All of the equipment code was completely rewritten, and say it with me: put into a state machine. Yay! Why aren't you clapping? This took multiple weeks, but I can't stress enough just how clean and manageable my code is now. I initially wasn't planning on rewriting, well, any of my code, but the equipment code especially, since I thought it was decently clean. But uh, no, uh, very wrong. I decided I wanted to remake the grenade quick use. Hold it. Instead of the player throwing it crisis style, I wanted him to throw it diehard style. Pinning it with his mouth, cooking it in his hand, then throwing it. I tried to just force my equipment system to get this to work, but after two days, I knew what I had to do. You know the drill, uh, all transitions and states are now stored in one file. Now, I can easily add the grenade quick use behavior. I just have an is main equipment pool, and when the grenade gets quick used, it uses these sets of transitions and states instead of the main transitions and states. The differences between main and quick use behavior is all stored in one file, which makes me very happy. And yeah, the, the grenade quick use is way cooler now. And on top of the equipment being a lot more stable, they just functionally work a lot better. One example I can think of is the intermediate reload system. You can now start a reload and immediately cancel it by attacking, which feels so good to use. Imagine you start reloading and an enemy rounds the corner. You just have to watch the whole reload animation play out as you're getting shot, but that doesn't happen anymore. Now you could just cancel the reload and shoot him. Implementing something like that without a state machine would be a mess. Anyways, lastly, I decided to remake the quick use system. Stop that. I first started off by thinking. I wanted a way for the player to quickly switch between quick use items like the med stim, grapple hook, and grenade without going into the inventory. I also wanted it to be diegetic, so it couldn't just be a simple UI element that pops up like in other games. After a bit of thinking, I felt like a watch would be cool, so I made a prototype. Hmm. Hmm. So I first modeled the watch, then made animations, then made the UI for the wheel. You can now easily switch between any quick use items. Anyways, that's it. Six months of work. If you haven't done so already and you think it's cool, please wishlist Parzan. It helps me out a ton. We're currently at over 2,500 wishlists, and I couldn't thank you guys enough. The last video alone got it over 1,000 wishlists, so thank you so much. Also, if you're interested in supporting me with money, I've got a Patreon. There's some cool perks and parts of the project on there, so check that out. I also have a Discord server, so if you want to chat or have any ideas for the game, you can go message me there. Anyways, I'm not going to make any more promises that, uh, I'm gonna consistently upload anymore. Uh, currently I'm zero for free for promises to actually consistently uploading, but I'll try my best. Uh, I didn't mention it, but from January to the end of March, I was actually working a full-time software job and I had way less time to work on the game. But that's been over for the past couple of months and things have picked up again. So hopefully I'll post a lot more often during the summer. Not a promise though. Anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.